I'm Jonathan from Rupert Neve Designs, and today I'm going to show you how to set up and use your new 517 500 series microphone preamp and compressor. Because the 517 is in the 500 series, it requires a separate rack and power supply. And today, of course, we're using the Rupert Neve Designs R6. You're going to need some cables, and depending on the rack you're using and the other gear, you're going to need either DB25s, XLR, or quarter inch TRS balanced. For this example, we're going to be using XLRs. Make sure you plug the XLR male into the right input on the back of your 500 series rack, and then take another XLR cable from the output, and that will either feed a mixer, an interface, or another piece of gear. Next, you're going to need two instrument cables. The first one's going to plug into the instrument input on the front of the 517, and then the other one would go in the through and go on to either an amplifier or a pedal board or another piece of gear if you choose to do this. If your microphone requires phantom power, you'll need to turn on the 48 volt phantom power on the front of the 517. If it's a dynamic, a passive ribbon, or a condenser with its own power supply, you'll want to leave the 48 volt off. Now it's time for some sound. You want to turn the blend control all the way over to the mic position and bring up the red rotary gain switch on the microphone preamp to about three quarters of the way or until you start to see the red overload LED flash. Then you're going to want to back the level down one or two steps to allow yourself some headroom in your recording, also to blend in the instrument if you're choosing to do so. Next, we're going to want to do the same thing with the instrument input. Turn the blend control all the way over to the instrument side and slowly bring up the red instrument gain control while you're playing your instrument fairly hard until once again you see the red input LED start to flash. Then you're going to want to back it off a little bit as well. If you're experiencing any 60 cycle hum with the through input onto the amplifier or perhaps pedal board or other piece of gear, try hitting the ground lift switch and seeing if it goes away. Choose the position with the least amount of hum and if you're not hearing any difference between the two, we suggest that you leave it in the grounded position. Now let's explore one of the very special features of the 517, the phase and vary phase function. To start with, set the blend control at about 50%, and then adjust from there for a pleasing balance between the richer or warmer sound of the amp and microphone and the more upfront sound of the direct input. Then you're going to want to hit the phase switch to see which position has more low frequency content, and that's the best place to start. Next, engage the vary phase switch and slowly sweep the very phase from minimum to maximum, finding the position with the most low frequency or the most pleasing blend of sound between the direct input and the microphone. Remember, this will change the tone and your sound, and this can be quite subjective, so there isn't necessarily a right or wrong position. It does give you many good options. Now it's time to try the optical compressor. With your instrument playing, Engage the optical compressor and bring it down from plus 10 until you just start to see the yellow LED begin to flash. Then, if you want more compressor, lower the threshold, or if you want less, bring it up until you barely see the LED flash at all. The silk button is a special feature on the 517. Engage the silk button, and this will allow you to saturate the output transformer with more mid-range harmonics to give you more vintage vibe and character. The harder you hit the output of the 517, the more apparent the silk function will be. Have fun recording with your new 517 microphone preamp and compressor. And remember, you can learn more about all our gear at rupertneve.com and feel free to contact us if you have any questions.